run to rest. Run with cough syrup, aspirin, and thermometer to Jesus. Today we have the story of a blind beggar whom Jesus healed on the Sabbath. It is a story about bad theology, medicine, and a thermometer. The bad theology that Jesus confronts is called the Deuteronomic heresy that states that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people with the implication that if something bad is happening to you, you must have sinned. The medicine is mud in the eyes of the beggar and the thermometer is the witnesses to the miracle. There is fear. The blind beggar's parents are afraid to tell the truth because if they identify Jesus as the Messiah, they will not be able to worship in the temple. There is urgency. Night is coming. There is a solution to the problem. Work the works of him who sent Jesus. Laura Gadke said, all you need in your home to be prepared for the virus is cough syrup, aspirin, and a thermometer. I asked, why cough syrup? Isn't a cough your body's way of fighting an infection? She said, you take the cough syrup so that you can rest. I asked about aspirin because a fever is our body's response to a pathogen. She said, it was to lower your body temperature in case of a high temperature that could harm your body. I asked, why a thermometer when you know you're sick? She said, the health professionals will ask you what your temperature is and you want to be able to provide that information. The story in short is that the Pharisees confront Jesus about healing on the Sabbath and Jesus tells them that they missed the point. This holy moment isn't about who sinned, but so that the glory of God may be revealed in this miracle of restoring the blind man's sight. Jesus, the light of the world, is revealed in restoring sight to the blind. The proper use of the Sabbath for Jesus is to do the works of the Father. The urgency is that night is coming. A spiritual analog to Laura's cough syrup, aspirin, and the thermometer is a Sabbath rest, medicine for the soul, and taking our spiritual temperature. In the analog, I suggest that we enter into rest now with fervor, find food for our souls, and check in with the ones we love, measuring each other's spiritual temperatures. The first story is about how men in the time of childbirth are asked to boil water. The water wasn't so much about sterilizing claws as to give men something to do while waiting for the birth of the child. It's a natural instinct to run when we are afraid. Fear causes us to run from danger. Boiling water is a clever way to give the men something to do so that they don't interfere with the birthing process. In a spiritual analog, we should follow our instinct to run and instead run to the Sabbath rest with Jesus. Spiritual disciplines are work, but they are the work of the Spirit. They can be done in the safety of our homes. They can be done with safety through digital media. They can be done in our quiet times with Jesus. When our sense of who we are is challenged, there are two healthy responses. One is humor and the other is sublimation. Humor is a way of deflecting that if done without harmful words can lessen our anxiety. A better response is to respond to fear with love. An example is when a child is verbally attacked and instead of lashing out in anger, we bring them close to us and embrace them, comforting them with words of reassurance and words of love. Boil some water, but let the water be the waters of your baptism. Raise the temperature of your spiritual fervor. Don't run away in fear. Run to Jesus. Sabbath rest is the work of the Spirit. I recently watched the movie Pearl Harbor, where in the first scene, Rafe and Danny are children playing like they are fighter pilots in Danny's dad's airplane. They make machine gun sounds and flip switches. Suddenly the engine starts and the plane begins to move forward and then take off. Somehow astonishing, something astonishing happens. Rafe guides and lands the plane safely. Soon Danny is attacked by his father and Rafe defends Danny. In this modern parable, Rafe is Jesus launching the miracle of flight and guiding the plane. Danny is a church and enthusiastic co-pilot and the dad is a Pharisee attacking Danny and raining terror on his friend. With COVID-19 in our community, the plane is already in the air and we shouldn't crawl under the seat. We should help fly the plane. 
For many of us, this virus has reluctantly launched us into the 21st century, fully aware of our finitude and uncomfortable with our hands guiding the plane. So, buy some cough syrup if you don't already have some, and find Sabbath rest in doing the will of the Father. Buy some aspirin if you don't already have some, and take your spiritual medicine. Buy a thermometer if you don't already have one, and take your spiritual temperature and the temperatures of others by self-reflection and checking in with your neighbors. Go now with rest, renewal, and reflection.